surprising subjects, defying categories. So much so that someone once said that she is an island on which no boats land. But to us, she is the quintessential Canadian writer, her urbane humanity emerging like the goddess Nike from the deepest reaches of the Canadian wilderness. Born in Ottawa in 1939, Margaret Atwood grew up in the woods of Tomiskaming and Lake Kippawa. Her father was an entomologist. His study of insect life meant living among the natural habitat of his specialty. Living on the land with her intelligent and sensitive parents and brother gave her a unique sense of independence, the tenuous requirements for survival, and built a remarkable foundation for an ethical approach to nature. Her values and acknowledgement of the environment have been the heart of her Canadian identity, and it informs the themes that unfold in her work. When she was eight years old, the Atwood family moved to Toronto for a child who had learned instinctively about the demands and gifts of nature. Coming to terms with classrooms and city life gave her a unique perspective on social behavior. In school, the way in which girls mistreated one another came out in the perspective of her deeply felt novel, Cat's Eye, evidence of how she is able to look at authority and society's rules with the eye of an outsider. Margaret Atwood, the writer, always portrays women with frankness and level-headed judgment. Her perception is female, but there is always a sense of balance when she deals with gender or the way society deals with gender. When you see Margaret Atwood in public interviews, you see the intensity with which she listens. She's not shy about correcting inaccuracies, insisting that we take care with the language we use. I've read a lot of stuff, but I still don't know anything about Margaret Atwood. You have a marvelous sense of not communicating anything about yourself. You haven't asked me anything about myself. Like all true novelists, her work is prophetic but the prophecy is always understandable by other human beings who read her work. The master storytelling of The Handmaid's Tale frightens us because it tells us what we know, deep down, can really happen. Atwood the novelist does not spare us from visions of what we might be. It is an understatement to say that she is prolific she has published 17 books of poetry, 16 novels, 10 books of nonfiction, eight collections of short fiction, eight children's books, graphic novels, literary criticism, essays, and drawings. It is safe to say that she is our most honored Canadian writer. Her values and her bond with nature formed the basis of much of her role as an active global citizen. As a citizen of her city, she and her partner Graham Gibson stood engaged in civic battles, challenging the Spadina Expressway and the amalgamation of Toronto into a megacity. As citizens of the world, the two of them revived Penn Canada in the 1980s and brought it back to the umbrella of Penn International, the oldest human rights civil society organization, which fights censorship and defends writers who are persecuted, imprisoned, or tortured for their writing. Forty-five years ago, they were key to the formation of the Writers' Union of Canada, which is committed to the rights and livelihood of all of Canada's authors. Much of her work with Graham now focuses on caring for our environment, particularly with the preservation of bird sanctuaries in both hemispheres. Margaret Atwood is a force, manifesting Canadian identity and nature to the world. She inspires our pursuit for integrity through her actions, ideas, and words. Her unique powers of imagination and expression have made the world better. The moment, the moment when, after many years of hard work and a long voyage, you stand in the center of your room, house, half acre, square mile, island, country, knowing at last how you got there, and say, I own this is the same moment when the trees unloose their soft arms from around you, the birds take back their language, the cliffs fissure and collapse, the air moves back from you like a wave, and you can't breathe. 
No, they whisper, you own nothing. You were a visitor, time after time, climbing the hill, planting the flag, proclaiming. We never belonged to you. You never found us. It was always the other way round. <laughs>